So this is just a quick video. I've got Jacob, the producer, that's gonna give me a nudge around 10 minutes. Just gonna do a 10 minute overview from a Robo Shadow perspective in terms of getting set up and what you should be thinking about in terms of working with the Robo Shadow platform. So anyone can get a session with one of our support people. We will always go over and do more in depth demos. We would always suggest to get up and running with the platform, get a bit of um, maybe some agents and some external scans done, have a bit of a play and we will work with you on your data so at any time you can reach out to us but hopefully this video should give you a fairly quick guide in terms of what you can be doing uh, from a robo shadow perspective this test environment here is already kind of half laid out and i'll use this just to walk through the robo shadow setup but first of all how do i get this data into here so i'll come back to the external scanner at the top and but maybe you start with the vulnerabilities uh the windows defender data pretty much the windows update data and encryption uh, as well so that is literally just by installing that agent so here if you go into downloads and install that agent when you click on that agent click to download when you click that button it will copy the organization id to your clipboard and you can go ahead and install that if you want to understand a bit about where your org um what your organization id is you can just click here and click organizations and it will give you uh, your id a lot of our customers will have multiple organizations so that will make a bit more um sense if you are using multiple organizations within robo shadow but once you've got a couple of agents installed the dashboards will start populating almost instantaneously and you can install this via an rmm we have documentation to be able to do that the documentation will sit around here somewhere and also it rolls out very very quickly via intune so i'll just show you some of that here the other way that you can set up your data is by syncing with active directory if we detect that you've got microsoft defender licenses as well you can sync that defender data and we use that to help triangulate some of your vulnerabilities as well but that's very easy one click setup and that will allow you just to go ahead and start pulling in that data because what you want to understand is what is how do I reconcile with my primary user store like Azure Active Directory so we have on-premise Active Directory the actual Azure Active Directory effectively 365 and then we sync with the Intune environment as well and you can see that with all of the accounts there there's also within the download section an agent to go ahead and sync with on-prem AD as well if you have a mixture of on-prem AD and 365 as well we will triangulate those devices but it's very important from a cybersecurity perspective to be able to understand what machines do you not have coverage on? What machines do you not have RoboShadow on? And again, you can see that when you've synced with 365 or on-prem AD, you can see what you don't have agents on effectively. There's also the capability to be able to deploy with Intune. You can do this manually for devices, or you can go ahead and set up the whole of the Intune devices, anything in the Intune estate, and that will sync quite nicely. It means that you're not managing via an RMM system in general the other way that you would get data into the system so here this is the external scanner so it'd be external scanner here this will go through and do mmap owasp or zap our own robo ai pull in showdown data as well and you can also set up robo guard as a schedule so here you can see some of this data is hashed out here but you can see uh, that will return vulnerabilities ports open and give you an understanding from an owasp perspective and all of that good stuff so ultimately Ultimately, that's another way that you will pull data in there and you can set up RoboGuard on any of your scans. You can go ahead and select RoboGuard and you can add a schedule to get that set up. That is on our pay plan, which I will hopefully explain quickly at the end if there's time. And the other way that you can get data into the system, I don't think this test account has this enabled, but here you can go ahead, select any of your agents and you can just go ahead and say start scan. That will start an internal scan. So that will be an internal vulnerability assessment that will go ahead do the top 1000 ports or 65k if that's what you choose but that will go ahead and do a full scan sort of internal scan that's going to help you because if a hacker gets in via a desktop or a server they're going to look for a scanner or a printer or something they can get a reverse shell on so that's how you do the internal component as well so let me just go back to the dashboard so that's how you're going to get data into the system i will show you very quickly how you will just kick off your own external scan you can literally i use this as a scanme.mmap.org is a nice way to test the system the lovely people at mmap 
uh, stand this up for us, uh, not for us, um, for everybody, not just Robo Shadow. You can choose if you want a web scan or just a port scan, and you can go ahead um, get that kicked off. If you're on a paid plan, you can also set the schedule for RoboGuard to go ahead and scan continuously. The LAN scanner also has RoboGuard as well, so you can set the LAN scanner to go ahead and just do continuous scanning as well. Um, again, that is part of our paid plan. So within the dashboard, as we will see on the homepage, I'll just flick back, back to the dashboard. I'll come back to the reporting in a second. This will populate with all of your data. So it's fairly self-intuitive in terms of what this data means and we've got lots of different videos around um, that gives you a, a better understanding of some of the drill downs um, all of this data is fairly self-explanatory and it all has click through so here for instance so this will be office 365 this is where you can see when you do that 365 sync that zero ad sync you can see who's got MFA enabled, who's not got MFA enabled, what global administrators do or don't have MFA enabled and all of that good stuff. So everything on the dashboard will have a drill down. So I'll leave you just to run through those. The other thing that I was going to show you as part of the drill down, I don't know if there's any Mac, you'll see the Mac tabs are separate just to make sure that we're keeping the data fairly separate because the data types are quite often uh, different between Windows and Macs. So just go ahead and you can look at the toggle between between the tabs here to look at the Mac or the Windows data. Just trying to think if there's anything else that I want to show you here. I'll leave you to explore that for yourself. The other thing that I should probably show you is Cyber Hill. So if we click here and, and look at vulnerabilities, so we have the 8,000 or 7 to 8,000 apps within the Winget database. So it will show you where there are upgrades available. So here you can upgrade via the Winget repository and what that will do Again, these are on uh, more premium plans, but this will allow you to go ahead and update that machine. This is there's one for this example, but ultimately I'm being told three minutes left, but I might go over Jacob if that's OK. So this one will uh, will install a single machine. But if there was 500 machines in your estate, they'd all come up here. So you can do a whole state at a time. You can also schedule an upgrade for later. If you schedule that upgrade for later, you tell users we're doing a bit of maintenance, seven, eight o'clock or something like that. Anyone's machine that on and they online the next time that they come or boot up it will then run that install there some applications um, can be a little bit difficult and sometimes you want to kick out the old version sometimes there won't be an exact match so quite what you can do is force an upgrade so if I say um, Adobe here I don't know what's going to come up here so if I say Adobe here it will go and look up the Winget database and give you an option so if you click force update it will uninstall the app it's done a match on and it will reinstall what you put in here effectively so sometimes if you want to change application you want to get rid of one and install another the other thing that i will show you here is that you can update your own exe so again just like a normal rmm you can update your own exe and use parameters to install there we think we're the best in the business of removing software a weird thing to be proud of um, but ultimately i think it's the stats like 64 percent of vulnerable applications are not used anymore by the user so you can go ahead and just remove stuff at an estate level there the suppression is if there is a false positive, which does happen in all platforms. If there is a false positive that goes through to our research team, they will look at that and update that for everyone. So that's kind of like crowdsource intelligence as well. If you suppress the CPEs as well, it means you do for any time you see that application and not just an individual CVE. And if you want to raise an exception that it's a genuine vulnerability, but you want to remove it from reporting because you've ring fenced it or signed that risk off, um, then that is definitely the way to go ahead and get that done. And you can just put a reason there, which you can also at a later date do a report on what you've suppressed from an exception perspective, just to make sure that you're keeping yourself honest. And that one thing that I will show you here is that from a software perspective, you it's not just the vulnerable apps. You can see the Winget update for pretty much every single piece of software that you've got in your estate. So if there's a little icon here, it means that it can be upgradable. We're improving this all the time. So if something doesn't work, feel free to get in touch, but we see all of the failure logic and we're, co we're constantly improving that. Again, it sort of ends up being uh, kind of like crowdsourced intelligence for us as well. So the only other bit that I wanted to show you very quickly was just the reporting on the homepage. Again, feel free to send us some feedback as well. We love hearing from users. There is 
is a light mode available as well but you can turn everything into an ultimate cyber report um, there are more reporting options coming as well and I should probably tell you here we've also got integrations so as a there's CSV exports API exports we've got cyber benchmarks at the time recording this video is in beta um, but we've also got PSA integration so we've got pretty much every PSA in the market and if it doesn't feature there then let us know and we will add that for you um, but that's given me a nice bit of block fill time um, to look at the report so here this will go into a printable page that you can turn into a PDF but it's pretty much all of your data within the platform that you can export a PDF of if it's some people want it to be verbose some people don't want the data to be verbose but you can see there it just shows you all of the data within the platform a nice report very good from a client if the there was land scanner data it would feature there again it brings in the external scanner data as well um, all into one nice neat report what you can do with the filter is if there's stuff in there that you don't want you can deselect bits or select bits um, um, just to make sure the report is more or less verbose in terms of how you want to see it so uh, I've gone slightly over there um, but hopefully that should just give you a very quick overview in terms of um, how to interact with the RoboShadow platform but our support is really really active as you if you've been on the platform you will know feel free to get in touch we're happy to answer your questions and in fact we absolutely love that so thank you ever so much for watching